What up, what up, what up? This is Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the resting membrane potential and the action potential. Today, it's time to talk about the synapse, which is a connection, usually between one neuron and another neuron. As you know, this is the soma or the cell body followed by the axon, and then this is the axon knob or the nerve terminus or the axon terminalis which will release what? A neurotransmitter from within a vesicle. The vesicle will rupture pew, by exocytosis. The neurotransmitter is out. It's going to act on a receptor on the other neuron. This is how we transmit the nerve impulse from one cell to another. This is my biology playlist, and today's video is number 35. As you know, the nerve impulse is unidirectional. It goes in one direction only. Okay, one direction from the soma to the axon terminalis or from the axon terminalis to the soma. Well, the one direction is from the soma to the axon terminalis. We call this orthodromic. The opposite is known as antidromic. But antidromic is nonsense here. The actual correct answer is orthodromic. This is how the nerve impulse flows. Okay, what's that neurotransmitter? Where is it made? It's made in the soma. Where is it stored? In the axon terminalis. Where is it released? From the axon terminalis. How? By exocytosis. Remember, exocytosis is active transport, which means it requires energy. It needs ATP. Can you give me an example of these neurotransmitters? Sure. You have acetylcholine and norepinephrine. These are the two most famous ones. Others include dopamine, serotonin, etc. Types of synapse. This connection that you see here could be between a nerve and another nerve. We call this neuroneural. Or it could be between a nerve and a muscle. We call this neuromuscular. Or it could be between a nerve and something else like a gland, neuroglandular. Let me show you. By the way, this slide comes from my series on the autonomic nervous system in my physiology playlist. Look at this. What's that? That's a nerve and that's a muscle. So this is neuromuscular. How about this nerve and there is a ganglia and there is another nerve. Oh, so this is neuro neural. How about this neuro neural? How about this from that nerve to the adrenal gland? Oh, so this is neuro glandular. Let's name the neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine here, acetylcholine here, acetylcholine here, acetylcholine here. How about the parasympathetic postganglionic acetylcholine? How about the sympathetic postganglionic this is norepinephrine. All of these lovely synapses have receptors, and you can stimulate or inhibit these receptors using medications, as we have discussed before. Let's do this for the cholinergic system, and let's do this for the adrenergic system. Cholinergic system. All right, let's go. How do you make acetylcholine? I need acetyl-CoA and choline. Acetylcholine. Duh! Now we have acetylcholine. All right, what's the name of the enzyme that will make the acetylcholine um, choline? Acetyl transferase. Wow, that sounds cool. Now acetylcholine is in the vesicle, all right? How do I get it out of the vesicle? First of all, you need calcium for this because calcium is the here of contraction. And now, pew, the vesicle will rupture by exocytosis. It's going to release the acetylcholine. The acetylcholine has options. If you're talking about a ganglion, the acetylcholine is going to bind to N sub N receptor. The first N is nicotinic. The small N is neuronal. How about if this is a muscle? Well, that's a neuromuscular junction, and the receptor waiting for the acetylcholine is N sub M, nicotinic for muscle. How about if we're talking about a smooth muscle here? Then the receptor waiting for the same acetylcholine is a muscarinic receptor. Acetylcholine has performed its job properly. Thank you so much, Doozy. How do I get rid of him? by an enzyme known as cholinesterase, and the cholinesterase will break down the acetylcholine into choline and acetate, and then you recycle them, and then we repeat the same process over and over and over again. All right, thank you so much, cholinergic. Let's talk about an adrenergic fiber. Adrenergic, why do you call it adrenergic? Because it releases noradrenaline. Oh, I get it. How do I make noradrenaline? Well, here is the song. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine. All right, norepinephrine, I love you. Now, let's get, get you out of here, okay? Let's rupture the vesicle, and now norepinephrine is out. How do you rupture the vesicle? Still, you need calcium. Norepinephrine is out. Norepinephrine has options. I can bind to the alpha receptor or to the beta receptor. Norepinephrine has performed its job properly. Let's get rid of him. You can get rid of him by many, many ways. You can reuptake it, called 
active reuptake. You can destroy it by COMT enzyme, and this stands for catecholamine, because norepinephrine is a catecholamine, O, because we will put a methyl group in the zero position to make it useless, and MT is the methyl transferase, because we are playing with a methyl group. And we have officially taken norepinephrine to the cleaners. We have broken it down into inactive metabolites or degradation products. What do you see here? Oh, this is a nerve and this is a muscle, skeletal muscle that is. So this is the neuromuscular junction. What's the neurotransmitter? Acetylcholine. What's the name of the receptor? Nicotinic sub M. M for muscle. Since this is a skeletal muscle, we have the N sub M receptor. But what if this was a smooth muscle or cardiac muscle? Then you will have the muscarinic receptor, simply M. Here is how the neuromuscular transmission work. All right, let's start. Remember calcium ruptures the vesicle? Yeah, but how does calcium enter here? Well, you'll have to activate calcium in order to enter. How do I activate this part? Well, you have to activate the entire neuron. How do I activate the entire neuron? Remember, it's action potential because action potential is life. How do I get the action potential to happen? You need activation or depolarization. And who's the hero of depolarization? Sodium influx. Sodium enters into the neuron, the neuron gets excited, we call this action potential. When the neuron gets excited, this calcium channel gets excited. Calcium enters, ruptures the vesicles, pew! Acetylcholine is out. Acetylcholine is going to bind to the nicotinic sub M receptor because this is a skeletal muscle and the skeletal muscle will contract later. Characteristics of the synapse. Unidirectional, delay, because this is a synapse, there is a gap here, so there is some kind of a delay. And with repeated stimulation, the synapse gets sick and tired of being sick and tired. What if I have more calcium? Well, if you have more calcium, you'll have more rupturing of more vesicles, and therefore you'll increase the release and increase neuromuscular transmission. There is another cation that hates calcium. It's called magnesium. We have medications that increase neuromuscular transmission, and we have medications that decrease neuromuscular transmission. A very famous exam question is this, Corari, or any drug that has the word Corari in it, such as tubocorarine. How does it work? It goes to this N sub M receptor, and it will tell that receptor, hey doofus, not today, I'm gonna inhibit you. Oh, I'm inhibited. Acetylcholine is not gonna be able to bind to the receptor, the muscle will not contract, and you will get paralysis. This medication is used by the freaking anesthesiologist to paralyze your muscle while he or she performs the surgery. Because if you leave your muscle to contract during surgery, your muscle is going to twitch, it's going to bleed, it's going to ruin the entire surgery. So we'll have to paralyze your muscles if we're talking about a general major surgery. So step number one, sodium enters into the neuron causing depolarization. Action potential starts in the neuron and then propagates until it reaches the axon terminus. Calcium influx, activation of acetylcholine vesicles, exocytosis of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is going to bind to its receptor. If we're talking about skeletal muscle, this is nicotinic sub M receptor. The rest of the story was discussed in my physiology playlist. We will also discuss it later in this biology playlist when we talk about muscles. We have just scratched the surface. If you want the detailed analysis and discussion, it's in my physiology playlist. We talked about the autonomic nervous system, nerve physiology, muscle physiology, all kinds of physiology. And if you want some kidney physiology, I have a course about this on my website, metacosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with 10 videos, 10 cases, plus my notes. You get to download all of these. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Nailers, where medicine makes perfect sense.